Hey everybody, Zach here, and welcome to the introduction to the fifth section of the RTS tutorial series. This section will cover buildings and construction. The introduction, as we discussed in the last section, is meant to help introduce concepts that some people might find complex. We won't be doing any work in this section except for considering some ideas. I'd like to thank people for understanding that I needed half a week off to do some work before returning to the series. I'd also like to thank people for making it this far into the series, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of it. I really do appreciate the feedback that I've been getting, and anything else you know you guys want to tell me, anything you want to see, feel free to put a comment down below, message me on Reddit or Twitter, or even join the Discord channel, a link for which is in the description below. So, in this section, or in this video, sorry, I'll be covering the proposed lessons. I'll be going over a little bit on interfaces. I know in a recap video or a summary video that I'll be doing for an earlier section, we'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, so there might be some repetition across those two. We'll talk about the meshes and we'll go over one major thing we need to consider. So the proposed lessons for this section are, well, this video, an introduction, setting up our UI and our parents, which will be our preview and our building master, an example of which you can kind of see in the background right now, we'll be spawning in our preview, which is the mesh on the right in the picture. We'll be controlling our preview, which is making it move around, rotate it, checking for overlap. We'll place it so it can be queued for construction and then setting it from construction to built. We'll be combining game time and construction We'll be doing a little bit of cleanup because there'll be pieces that when we start combining things might cause problems. And then for the final bit, we'll be upgrading to 4.22. I'm just going to make a quick comment on that. The reason I'm waiting so long to update the to 4.22 is that this section is the final section that is the sort of base of the, of the game. We have our game time, we have our units, we have our resources, and we have our buildings. The next sections will be combining those together, you know, harvesting our resources, using our NPCs, building our uh, building special buildings that will produce more resources, that sort of stuff. So now that we have the base done at the end of the section, it's the best time to upgrade to the next iteration of Unreal. So I have been getting a lot of questions about what interfaces are and what they do and why do we use them? Interfaces are an abstract class that allow two other classes. So a class, by the way, for those who are not familiar with the C++ term, is a blueprint in this case, to talk to each other. So it allows two blueprints to talk to each other. And as you've seen, we have other ways of doing that. We have event dispatchers, we have castings, um, you know, we can pass references. But interfaces in particular are unique because they allow two blueprints that can't usually share information to share information. So, for example, when we think about sharing information, our controller casts references to our pawn. Those two classes are able to communicate relatively easily. But, you know, casting from our controller to our marquee HUD is relatively difficult and they don't interact too well. And casting that way creates a lot of overhead. So interfaces cut this down and allow for smoother communication. The only downside to interfaces is that they require you to know which variables, sorry, not variables, which blueprints you want to talk to each other. Now you can add some in later on, as you've seen, you know, we can always hit add interface to a blueprint and add it in. This is one of the few features in Blueprints I think is actually slightly easier to work with in Blueprints than it is in C++, but I have my opinions, you'll have your own. Um, alternative to interfaces, we could use variables in this section. So we're going to create an interface that is in our, a new interface in our HUD, or in our user interface, that passes class information of the type of building we want to make. So do we want to make a factory? the building to the left in this picture, a silo, a building to the right in the picture, um, one of the barracks or a training depot um, to our preview master. 
Now doing that, we could use a bunch of variables. That's actually four variables right there. Which means that, you know, as we add in more buildings, we're going to have multiple variables and this will be hard to keep track of. Using an interface allows us to pass the entire class through and just select the one we want from that class. Now, yes, you could combine these, but that is just a bit of overkill. Um, and I'll talk about what that is in the next video. And when I mean what that is, I mean combining them and what this looks like because this will be one of the first things we have to do is set up this interface. So we have four new meshes that we are going to use for this section. They will serve as a factory, a silo for our resources, a training post, and a barracks. And you can download them in the description below. I'd like to thank Stevening for the um, silo mesh. And I'd also like to point out that, you know, these meshes are meant as placeholders. They aren't meant to be part of a final product. If you are importing your own meshes or are making your own meshes, you need to be aware of where the pivot point for the mesh is. The pivot point should be on the bottom because meshes can be of different sizes, different shapes, and a whole bunch of other things Yes, while you can compensate for where the pivot point is if it isn't on the bottom, unless the pivot point, unless all the other factors of the mesh are the same and the pivot point's in the same spot on all those meshes, it's hard to make that compensation. If it's on the bottom of the mesh, then you don't need to compensate for where it will spawn in. The pivot point is where the mesh will spawn at. So it's on the bottom, it will spawn so that the bottom is touching the ground. If it's on the top of the mesh, it will spawn most of the mesh under the landscape. Now, it doesn't matter where on the bottom it is, so long as it's on the bottom. Now, I said it doesn't matter, it, it does. It does in the sense that when we have the mesh follow the mouse, it's gonna follow also from the pivot point. So if you want it to follow from the center of the mesh and your pivot point's on the bottom left, you're gonna need to do, need to do a little bit of compensation there but it's easier to compensate for that than it is to compensate for the pivot point not being on the bottom of the mesh. So there are some things that we need to consider. We need to consider construction. We have three options. Our first option is instant. Our second option is a managed system using an AI. Our third option is player controlled. Each of these options offer different advantages and disadvantages. Instant construction, for example, only has two steps. So the first step for all of these is spawning in the preview. Once you've set the building, each of the three approaches will handle it differently. Instant will just set a fully constructed building. The managed AI version will do a construction queue and the player controlled version will use a construction manager. From there, while well, our instant is done, our managed and player controller will have different things it needs to do. Our managed will use a construction manager to find you know, NPCs to send to build the building or you know, allocate which building gets built in which order. The player controlled version, the user will have to select which building gets built or send NPCs to that building to build it. And then finally, in both versions, we end with our building. So which version you want to use is based on what you're looking to do. If you're just looking to try to take a crack at this on your own before you have tried anything else, start with the instant. Learn how to get the preview to spawn and then learn how to get the spawned preview to turn into a spawned constructed building. Now, if you're trying, if you already know how to do this and you're trying to pick between the managed AI and the player controlled version, just note that you can actually have both. And in fact, in the long run, I'm hoping to have both in this system. What your game type is 
should determine which one you do first. If you are doing a city builder, then using the managed AI system is you know, perfectly fine. It's quite literally what games like Tropico do. Um, if you're doing a more command and conquer style game, then the player controlled version might be better to use. And that isn't to say that in the managed version, you can't then have player control and saying, prioritize this building over that building. Likewise, in the player controlled version, you know, you might have several buildings on the map and you don't want to have to manage everything. You might just tell the AI, you know what, here are the buildings I want built in this order, build them as we have the resources, send the NPCs on your own. Um, for this series, we'll be starting with the player controlled because we are going with a more command and conquer style game. As we get further into the series, past the section that is, we'll be adding in a managed AI to take over from the user. So that kind of covers what we need to think about for this series and for this section. As this series goes forward, things are going to get more complex rather rapidly. So I just want to, again, point out there are ways to reach out to me if you're struggling. You know, my Twitter uh, is linked on my profile here, along with my Twitch account and my Discord. Of course, you can always comment here. Um, I will be faster, of course, on Discord. And I try to do um, live streams for development work on Unreal on Wednesdays on Twitch. However, given the last few weeks, I've not been able to, given work. Um, I do do game streams on the weekends, by the way. But if you are struggling with any of this material, feel free to pop into any of the streams, pop into my Discord, message me or uh, either on YouTube or on Twitter, and I will do my best to help support you. If there's anything you wanted seen, seen added into the series, again, let me know on any of those platforms and I will do my best to include it. Or if it's outside of the scope of the series, I will do my best to try to point you in a direction that might help. If I don't know the answer or if I do know how to do something you're looking to do, I'll help you solve it and work through the logic and the coding required. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson and I hope that you have a wonderful day.